Episode 1 takes place about 30 some odd years before Episode 4, which was the original film. What is it? Your father's lightsaber. This is the weapon of a Jedi Knight. Not as clumsy or random as a blaster. An elegant weapon for a more civilized age. I was looking for a kind of sword fighting that was reminiscent of what was in the movies that we'd already done but a more energized version of it because we'd actually never seen real Jedis at work. We'd only seen crippled half droid, half men, and young boys that had learned from these old people. So to see a, a Jedi in his prime fighting in the prime of the Jedi, I wanted it to be a much more energetic and, and faster version of what we've been doing. So I think he wanted something special. I think he wanted the audience to understand where these Jedis came from, what their powers were, and how sophisticated they were in the art of battle. The Sith Knights were started by a fallen Jedi Knight uh, who was tempted by the dark side. Uh, the secret was that they, they were patient and they uh, trained and studied that they didn't make their uh, presence known to anybody until we get to episode one here where they finally make their move to try to take over the universe. With this film, the fighting had to be very strong. What I had in mind after watching the first Star Wars films was that, um, was that you would see that they had studied every single style of swordplay, you know, from Epe to Kendo. That's what we've gone for. I like that there. That's strong in there, isn't it? You know the Kendo movies. <laughs> Since they had chosen such a short-range weapon, they would have to be so good if they're up against ray guns and lasers. I think it just needed to be much more gritty than it was, you know, much more scary than it was, much faster and much stronger. They have to be constantly in, in check. There's no room for error in any of the fights. You won't see it because they're so fast, but if you slowed them down and freeze-framed them, they can only parry there, or they can only attack there. The moves are so natural, uh, or so correct, it's the only place they can be. The first time we were rehearsing these fights, of course, we, we started making the sound effects of the lightsabers, like, woo, 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 woo. you know, we kind of looked at each other and I thought, okay, we have to stop that, you know. It's interesting, I mean, I've done maybe four or five films where I've had to do quite serious sword fighting. So I have a kind of a grounding in it. Normally with, like, sabers, you have to kind of hack, you know, and, put weight behind it, but with these things it's very, very gentle, kind of smooth and fluid. Fast movements, but very kind of gentle at the same time. And when they use their lightsabers, they're, uh, they're extensions of themselves, you know? I love having my lightsaber. It's the most exciting thing I've ever known, to have my own lightsaber. It's cool. There's not many people can say that they have one. <laughs> I mean, you're almost straight out of that. Once that's gone in, you're almost you're right. spinning and chopping because he just steps in. Right, so what is it again from yeah, there? Yeah, just that from the luck from the... We were blessed with both you and, and Liam. Um, I think they understood that it had been written almost as dialogue, and so it was, they could relate to it very easily. And it's got such a particular style of its own, really, the, the lightsaber fights. So I don't know, um, it just all came together. I love it, I've really enjoyed it. Ewan picked it up in a flash, and um, now it's, it's, I think, faster than any of us. So this is a, this is a Ewan McGregor lightsaber. <laughs> we had to get, it goes through one fight. We're gonna have to get stronger ones made. They don't make lightsabers like they used to. Liam has a, has a beautiful style, powerful. Yeah, that's it. That's what makes it. He's fantastic at it. I said I wanted a faster version of what the other movies were, more energetic version. And that's basically what he gave me. And I think the key to it was that we had a good villain who was a great fighter. I always wanted to fly when I was a kid. 
I wanted to be like the guys in the movies. So that's how I started my martial arts. I found Darth Maul, and he's being played by a guy called Ray Park. And he's very good in um, uh, like kendo and martial arts, and, and he's a brilliant gymnast. I mean, you know, he's better than I am. We actually cast a villain who was a sword fighter. You know, when you have one of the characters who actually knows what he's doing and is really an expert at it, it, um, it definitely ups the ante for all the other actors to do their thing uh, as well as they can. And uh, I think it makes a big difference on the screen. We could see immediately he had the look, he had all the physical skill, um, he was incredibly disciplined, and the amount of work that this guy did was phenomenal. I mean, he put everything. He spent, you know, 20 hours at the studio every day. The hatred that comes out of his eyes, there's no question that he is the serious bad guy. The um, makeup, which was beautifully done, instantly shows you someone of, of, of who is a, a real menace. The look of um, Darth Maul, the Sith Lord, I think it's cool. I think the makeup and the horns and the lenses and the teeth, you just can't help being naughty, you know, just help being that character. I think we all have a bit of a dark side in us, and so I just try and bring that out of myself when I play the character. No, he's got to kick him and then jump up, because in the next cut, he's landing. He's jumped oh, so, way so, up. Okay, so, so then he could, he could kick him and then jump. Jump, yeah, he's got to kick him and then okay. jump. It would be not a very exciting sequence. I think it was all just done with doubles. Um, I want to try something else. Because most of the emotion of the fight is on people's faces. Do it slow. You go like that. Now you got to kick it. Now, I don't even think he... If you did it with stunt people, it would all be, they'd all be little tiny things in the frame. You'd never get close to the emotion uh, that you get when you actually see the actors playing the part and see the actors struggling in the fight sequences. With three months of really hard work, they came up with a wonderful set of choreographic fights that uh, were really remarkable and fantastic. They've got to be down there doing it. You've got to get the sense of, of peril or threat. You know, we want them to win. They're our, our heroes, and so we need to be there with them.